Welcome to the fourth section in our series on minerals. This section is covering sodium, potassium, chloride, and magnesium. We'll start by looking at sodium, potassium, and chloride, three of the main electrolytes in our body. Sodium is the main extracellular cation, which means that it is positively charged and exists outside of the cell. Potassium is the main intracellular cation, again, meaning it's positively charged but located inside the cell. Sodium and chloride always go together. Uh, chloride is negatively charged, it's called an anion, and exists mostly outside of the cell, the main extracellular uh, anion. But a positive and a negative charge will attract. And sodium chloride is also known as salt which we'll discuss later. The main functions of electrolytes are to maintain cell integrity. And what that means is that as long as there's an equal amount of both positively and negatively charged ions on either side, there will be an equal amount of volume. If there's too few or too many, cells will either shrink or expand and not function to their full potential. So electrolytes help to maintain Blood volume, blood pressure, help transport nerve impulses, play a role in nutrient transport, and in particular, chloride is part of hydrochloric acid, which is important in keeping the pH low in the stomach. Now talking, uh, going back to sodium, looking at some of the sources of sodium, we Think about processed foods. Although a lot of people will add salt to their food with the salt shaker, most people get most of their sodium or most of their excess sodium from processed foods. Fast foods, um, packaged foods, sauces, soups. Uh, excess sodium is associated with hypertension, which we'll discuss later, but does not cause hypertension, it just increases the risk. I want to look at just uh, some sources of sodium. Some of these will be surprising, some not. When you think of cereal, you don't normally think about a lot of salt in cereal because it doesn't taste salty, but 220 milligrams in Special K. Now remember, the upper limit is 2300 milligrams. And remember, 10% or more is a considered a, a good source, but we're looking to limit sodium from processed foods. So this is almost, it's at 9%, almost a good source of sodium, and this is coming from something that doesn't even taste salty. Jello. When we talked about dessert food a little bit, this is, um, you know, it's not considered a good source, but 190 milligrams. And this is where you can really get those that sodium to add up because you're getting it from things like dessert food. Adding sodium to dessert food actually increases the sweetness. And that's why you're going to find a lot of sodium throughout a lot of dessert products, even if they don't taste salty. And the only reason I show the planter's penis is to show that it actually has less sodium than the last two products. And we think about salted peanuts as something that would be really salty. But one of the tricks here is if you put salt on the outside of a product, as soon as it hits your mouth, it stimulates those taste buds to get that salty taste and you, it's overwhelming. But if it's mixed into the food, you don't taste it as much. It actually gets covered by some of the other flavors, so you end up having to add a lot more. And that's something to think about uh, if you are cooking and you're trying to limit the amount of sodium you're adding to foods, you usually want to do it after or right on top because you'll actually will taste saltier than if it's mixed in with the food. Now this one is a surprising one because this is from a Weight Watchers, and I only picked this because their barbecue chicken was pretty high at 637 milligrams. So you're getting up to um, over a quarter of your amount of sodium that you need for the day just from this one meal. This is very common with a lot of packaged, processed TV dinners that you're going to throw into the microwave. So always be aware of that. And then lastly, this is from uh, Campbell's website. And 
one cup of their, let's see, baked potato with cheddar and bacon bits, 790 milligrams of sodium. So that's a whopping dose for just one cup. And so that's something that many people wouldn't expect to get out of just a cup of soup. Now potassium, it's an electrolyte. It's a very important fluid balance, just as we discussed in it, as well as in cell integrity, but also with heartbeat. Um, diets high in potassium actually help decrease the risk of hypertension. And part of this has to do with fluid balance. Remember that potassium is the main intracellular cation that exists in the cell. And sodium is the main extracellular. We want to balance between those two. So what happens in most American diets is that we get way too much sodium. because so we're eating fast food and processed food and way too few, way too little potassium because we're not eating enough fresh fruits and vegetables. So the potassium goes down and the sodium goes up. So it ends up having, taking the normal balance between these two uh, cations and disrupting that. So it's disrupting the fluid balance. So what are some of the sources of potassium? Salmon, avocado, plums, Banana, baked potato, lima beans, and acorn squash. Sam is a surprising source, but look at all these other ones. These are all plant sources. And so you'll find a lot, you know, most people just think about bananas, but actually some of the other sources, including baked potatoes or lima beans or plums, even have more. Magnesium. Magnesium is really important uh, in the body because it's involved in hundreds of reactions. It's involved in energy production. It's required to make RNA and DNA and proteins. It's required for muscle contraction and relaxation as well as bone mineralization. So where do we find magnesium? Well, good sources of magnesium are in black beans, spinach, yogurt, brown rice, almonds, lima beans, and Swiss chard. Again, you're going to look at a lot of plant sources here, with the exception of yogurt. Um, I do want to point out that magnesium is one of these nutrients that has been much depleted from our soil. So unless you're you know, buying from a local farmer's market, a local grower that uh, does a lot of crop rotation and has very healthy soil, uh, you're probably fairly low in your magnesium. It's not um, being absorbed into the plants the way minerals normally get absorbed from the soil into the plants. And part of that reason is because most of the agribusinesses use a monocultures. That means they just plant massive amounts of one crop and that really isn't healthy for our soil. So we do have mineral depletion and this is one of those minerals that has been depleted from the soils. And that is our the end of our talk on sodium potassium chloride